Question 8. 8. Describe the difference in reactivity between the chloroethane and chlorobenzene with hydroxide. So this is the hydrolysis uh, of the two compounds. And we know that chlorobenzene, the, the p orbitals of the chlorine, will overlap with the pi electron system in benzene ring. And therefore, the lone pair on the chlorine will delocalize in the benzene ring. During the delocalization, it can form the CCL double bond. Once it's formed this CCL double bond, it has a greater bond strength. And this double bond character, it will make the uh, CCL bond uh, harder to break, which means it's harder to undergo hydrolysis with the hydroxide solution. So we know that the chlorobenzene is less reactive than the, the chloroethane. So means this one is harder to undergo hydrolysis compared to this chloroethane. So let's move on to the answer. Okay, chlorobenzene is less reactive than the chloroethane. This is the statement because it's asked you to describe. Okay, so why chlorobenzene is less reactive? Uh, because the lone pair on the chlorine, this one, will delocalize in the ring, which will form partial double CCL bond. Means this one, right? Or you can say that the CCL bond now it gets strengthened and it's harder to break. Therefore, it's uh, uh, harder to undergo hydrolysis. Part B, compound T, this one, is useful synthetic intermediate. Okay, figure 8.1 shows uh, some reactions of the T. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the reactions between the T and the excess sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide solution and with heat Okay, this one, uh, the T will undergo hydrolysis. Means the ester bond will break here. And this part means uh, this carbonyl group will get OH to form COOH. And this part will form okay, this compound. And this O will get 1H to form ethanol here. Okay, because it say that the sodium hydroxide in excess. So once the uh, this carboxylic acid form, this will further react with the sodium hydroxide and this one will form the salt, the carboxylic salt. So therefore, you must give this answer. Don't give the COOH. You must give the carboxylic salt. Right. So, uh, so this is the W. And the X, of course, is just the uh, ethanol. Okay, so now the T, if it undergoes step one, so we try to compare the, the compounds. So after step one, uh, it's just this part change. Means the chlorine now substituted by the CN. So it's from nitrile. We know that it's a nucleophilic substitution. And after that, this one uh, will undergo, this compound will uh, undergo hydrolysis with acid solution because it's a HCl with heat. So the ester bond here will break. And this part again will form the ethanol. And this part, okay, this carbonyl group also will get OH and it will form this compound. Okay, so here is the COH from this part and the nitrile group here also will undergo hydrolysis and it will form the carboxylic acid as well. So therefore, the compound Y will be the dicarboxylic acid okay, from this compound. Okay, after that, 
this compound, okay, this compound after step two will form Z. We try to compare the molecular formula okay, uh, of this compound and the Z. So for this one is C6 H9 NO2. Z is C6 H13 NO2. So it has four extra hydrogen. So means it adds four hydrogen means it's a reduction. So we know that it must be the, re the reductions on the nitro. Carbon will get two hydrogen. Nitrogen will get another two hydrogen. So it's from these nitrile groups. So uh, means uh, step two is the reduction on the nitrile. And we can use either hydrogen gas with nickel catalyst or lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, so these are all the reactions. Okay, give the uh, systematic name of T. So this is the T. Right. Okay, so uh, it's the ethyl. Okay, and it's one, two, three, three coral, three coral, propanoid, right? So this one is three carbon. Huh? Okay, draw the structures of uh, WXYZ in figure 8.1. I already told you just now. Okay, all the structure is there, WXYZ. Okay, so you can uh, watch back later, right? WXY and Z. State the reagent and conditions for step one and step two. Okay, step one again is this. Okay, step one is to form nitro from this uh, uh, haloalkane. So, means uh, we need to put the KCN right as a uh, reactant. So KCN in ethanol with heat. So the chlorine will be substituted by the uh, the cyanide. To form the nitro. Step two again is the reduction, reduction of on the nitro. So we just use the H2 with nickel. Okay, this one. Okay, part C. This is the proton NMR of compound T. So four signals here. Uh, so the first one is the triplet, second is the triplet, third also triplet, and this is quartet. Okay, so from here, uh, roughly you should know uh, the, the splitting pattern and the chemical shift. From this structure, okay, let's start with this uh, CH3, this one. So this CH3 is, has the CH2 as a neighbor, so it's one plus two. So this one will form a triplet. So means uh, around one point something ppm, you see a triplet there, right? Because follow this table, for the environment of protons of alkane, so the chemical shift is around one ppm, right? So we know that this one is for the, this one is the CH3 here. Okay, so how about this? So this CH2, this one is considered as one and the <clears throat> adjacent carbon is has three protons here. So it's three. So it's one plus three. So you get a quartet. And this quartet must be around four ppm because this proton, this CH2, is next to electronegative atom. Okay, from this table, you can see. Our Q, which next to electronegative atom, will, the chemical shift will be around 4. 3 to 4. So you see, again, you see a quartet. 1 plus 3. So you get a quartet around 4. So it means this CH2, Okay, it will form this signal. Now, let's continue with other uh, signals. 
Okay, how about this one? This one is a CH2. Adjacent carbon is has another two hydrogen here. So it's one plus two here. So this proton will form triplets. Okay, one plus two is three. And these triplets must be around uh, two to three ppm because this CH2 is next to carbonyl. Here, alkyl which next to carbonyl is chemical shift is around 2.2 to 3. So we are quite sure that okay, these signals, these triplets, okay, is for this CH2. Right? Because its chemical shift is around 3 and it has the triplets. Right? Okay, so the last one. Last one, this one is a CH2 also. And this CH2 we consider as one. Adjacent carbon has two proton, so here. So it's one plus two. So it will form triplets as well. And these triplets must be around uh, three to four because this CH2 next to electronegative atom here. Alkyl next to electronegative atom, chemical shift will be around four, three to four. So therefore, we are quite sure these triplets okay, is uh, from this CH2. Okay, so this is how we deduce the NMR spectrum. Okay, part one, suggest why CdCl3 is used as a solvent instead of CHCl3. Very easy. Because CHCl3, these protons, uh, if you use it, if you use this, this solvent, this proton will give signals. That's why we don't use this. We use CdCl3 because this one will not give any signals. Okay, complete the table 8.2 uh, for the protons uh, animal of the T. Uh, this is what I told you just now. Um, okay. Uh, let's start with again with this uh, chemical shift 1.2. Uh, I okay. I already put the structure here for you to refer. Um, okay, so for this one, the first signal, okay, chemical shift 1.2, uh, and is uh, referred to this one. This is T, uh, compound T. So this is one plus two. So this will give a triplets, right? So splitting pattern is triplets. And environment of proton is alkene. Uh, just follow the tables given, right? So environment of, uh, environment of proton is alkene. So you just put alkene here. And the numbers of uh, hydrogen atom responsible for the pig. Okay, so uh, here is three, one, two, three, three protons, right? So you just put three here. Okay, so chemical shift 2.8. Uh, is referred to this one, 2.8. Huh? So the CH2 that next to the carbonyl group. And this one is, we consider as one. Adjacent carbon has two proton here. Right, so it's one plus two. So this CH2 will give triplets. So the splitting pattern is triplets. And the environment of proton is alkyl next to carbonyl. Okay, this one alkyl next to carbonyl right so you can get this all this environment of proton in the table okay numbers of the the hydrogens responsible for this peak so it's two yeah here two protons okay now uh let's move on to another splitting uh so it's uh 3.7 ppm 3.7 ppm is this one right uh, so this one CH2, we consider this one as one. Adjacent carbon has two proton, so it's two. One plus two is triplet. So means this CH2 will form triplets, and uh, it has 3.7 ppm because it's next to the chlorine. So therefore, uh, you just put the environment of proton alkyl next to electronegative atom, and it's a triplet here, All right? And it has two protons responsible for this peak. Okay, here the CH two. Okay, and the last one now, 
3.9 ppm. So 3.9 ppm is uh, is is belongs to this. Okay, this 3.9. So this CH2 is has uh, three protons on adjacent carbon. So it's one plus three. So you see a quartet. A quartet around 3.9 ppm. Why? Because this CH2 next to electronegative atom. So the environment of proton is the RQ next to the electronegative atom. And the splitting pattern is quartet. Okay, because it's 1 plus 3, 4. Means 4 peaks in these signals. And just two hydrogens responsible for this peak, right? So you just put two here. Okay, part three, explain the splitting pattern for the uh, the peak at one 3.9 ppm. This one is very easy. Again, 3.9 ppm, the splitting pattern, why is quartet? Because its adjacent carbon has one, two, three proton. So there are three proton on adjacent carbon. That's all. Thank you.